Hey guys, what's going on? It's Matt here with Chaos Art. I'm here today to continue my After Effects series. This is the second video in the series so far. Um, this video will be kind of recapping whatever went over in the first video and definitely giving a little bit more insight on what was going on. So, the first video is all about starting After Effects. This is basic After Effects. Um, this is this, this is this. I kind of just, a little bit sporadic about everything that I was teaching you. So now I'm going to go back and kind of reiterate what some stuff that I said and definitely give you a little bit more of a detailed video in this one. So I'm kind of back in the same uh, same workspace, different video, but same interface. Everything looks exactly the same as before. So let's go ahead and start off with a little bit more basic things. This is your toolbar across the top. Just like Photoshop, you have different tools, the hand tool, the zoom tool, the rotate tool. The rectangle tool, pin, type, all these different things. There are different hotkeys though than Photoshop is. Um, that is definitely something I did not go over in the first video. Definitely really big thing so you guys should know this. Um, once again with the orange box, to be able to search for anything or be able to do anything, you must have an orange box around the area that you are working on. So this right over here is your effects and presets. This is a little menu where you can come and for search for different things, like let's do fade in and you have different fade ins that you can do or fade out ramp different things so let's say I wanted to put a gradient which in After Effects is called a ramp on this video you just click it drag it over to your video and you can see that it immediately put it on there and it gives you a effects controls over here where your project menu would be and you can affect you can change the uh, you can change the options of each one of these. So the start of the ramp is the very top of it, and then you can put it right here at the top. You can move it down. I'm gonna put mine there. The bottom of the ramp. Let's move that up a little bit. So now it's a lot sharper gradient. You can change it from linear to radial, and then definitely with the colors you can do a gray. Use a swatch tool to do a darker gray. A whole bunch of different options and that comes up with every different effect and preset that you use. They're totally different for all of them. To delete an effect and preset, you just go over to your effects controls, click the title of it, and either press delete or right click and delete. So I'm going to exit out of that over there. That is your effects and presets. Next would be the character and paragraph. Once you are typing, much like Photoshop, you have the different text size, auto width, height, all these different menus right over here. Very simple to use, very basic, just like you're using Microsoft Word or something like that. Um, that is under character, you can change your text, a whole bunch of different things. And then, yeah, regular, italic, bold, and then bold, italic, which I'm just gonna keep it on regular for now. You can change the color of your text right here with this. You just click that, just like Photoshop, and then let's make it red, and then switch that, and then make this one white. So you have a foreground and a background color that you can switch between. Next will be paragraph, right next to your character, most likely. And then with this, you can do left alignment, center, right alignment, and then all these different options with alignment on your text. Indention by pixels. You just can click and drag one way or the other. Or you can click on it and type in 958. And there you go. You have 958 pixels indented to the right. Go back to character. And that is your character and paragraph. Once again, guys, if I am going a little bit too fast, please let me know. Um, I can always slow down and do individual videos for any of these things that you ha may have a question about or something like that. I'm just trying to get through all of the basic things very quickly so I can get you into some core things of After Effects. Next, you have the video stuff and your compositions down here. We have already went over this. But once again, you can import a video from your project or whatever it is to a composition. But you can also move a composition to another composition. So I just moved video stuff into my main comp, which now shows video stuff here. Which inside of video stuff has this video. So it's kind of like compception, but you get the idea. 
definitely uh, you need to keep an eye on not having a composition within a composition within another composition because it can get very confusing. If you had five comps within each other, definitely very confusing, but um, that's why you have a main comp where you can just put all the final compositions in there and just render that. It makes it so much easier and so much faster. So you have your project up here, effect controls. If I had an effect on this and I click on it where it brings up the orange box around it and I went to effect controls, it would show me all of my effects and my options with them. I do not have any effects right now, so it's not showing me anything. But let's add levels or curves. Right, let's put some curves on this. It's just kind of... I don't know. Just do that. It looks horrible, but it's okay. And you can max or minimize it. And then, so let's go to project. I'm over here messing around, video stuff. And then go to effects and effect controls. And it's there. If I had another composition and I clicked on that that had no effects on it, it would not bring me up this menu. It specifically is adapted for this one video. Just video stuff has curves on it. Nothing else does. So if I wanted to copy this, you always have the options for like the uh, copy, which is a little bit different than Photoshop is. Um, you must click up here at the top, and then you can do Command C and then Command V on a that is on a Mac on a uh, different uh, composition, and it'll also put that effect on there. Sometimes it's a lot easier just to redo it. It's not really that difficult a lot of times, but if you need something exactly, you can always just select it, Command C and Command V just to move it over to a different composition. Go ahead and delete that and go back to project. So next I will be talking a little bit about how to resize and change the aspects of your videos. So let's go with NVIDIA stuff. I slightly went over this in the last video. It wasn't very too descriptive, so I'm going to help you out a little bit more. Go ahead and make sure you have your orange box around your menu. And then click the video. A lot of times my videos start off looking like this whenever I open it up and import it in. And I'm like, well, that doesn't look right. So you can click on it, and you'll get these little squares around the outside of your video. You can, it's kind of like doing a uh, transform on Photoshop. After Effects and Photoshop are very similar, and when you're going to catch me referring to Photoshop every sentence I ever say. But you can grab the top, move it up, but definitely something weird is going on here. You can tell that it moves the top and bottom equally. That is definitely something new that uh, a lot of people aren't used to but it's something definitely to adapt to. Um, it actually ends up being very useful whenever you're trying to resize it because it resizes for your window. It's because the windows are obviously wider than they are high. So After Effects was like, well, it's probably going to be centered. So let's just move it out both directions. It makes it a lot easier. And then you can do the width the same way. And there you go. You have it full screened. Anything that I would have had behind this would be either black because that's my background or I could put another video or some sort of design behind it by just right clicking down here in my little video stuff menu, going to new and I can add text, a solid, light, camera, anything like that. Only things that will show up there are text and solid. A solid is basically a background or a just a color that you want to add to your video. A solid can be used in many different ways, especially with a whole bunch of effects and presets so that you are able to use them much, much like Particle World where you'll be able to put Particle World on a solid excuse me, and be able to use it properly. So I'm going to name this background and then make sure that it is locked aspect, aspect ratio the size of my composition and then you can make the color let's do like a blue there we go and there you go now your video is blue but you can come down here to your layers and move that below and now we have a blue background behind this video 
And you don't necessarily have to have any sort of background, you could just leave it black, or you could resize your video to be full screened. And, you, I mean, depending on how big your video is, like, if it was much like this one that I'm using now, perfectly fine to do that. It'll, it'll size up just fine, it'll still look good, give you really high quality still. But if you had a very, very small video, probably not the best practice to be able to do that. Um, definitely sometimes it is better just to leave the black there so you don't have an overstretched video where it looks very bad and very pixelated. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, thank you again for watching. Once again, let me know if I'm going too fast. I'm definitely going to uh, try to rush through this intro really quick and get you into some, some meat and potatoes of After Effects. If I can get you into the, uh, this is how you use effects and presets more efficiently, this is how you more customize After Effects, like all these different things that will be very good for you. Um, but for now, this is just the intro, so it may seem kind of dull and may seem like I'm rushing through it, which I kind of am. But definitely, guys, let me know what you think. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.